with Deshaun Watson. How's that for a one-two punch of Deshaun Watson and Derrick Henry? Second Pro Bowl for Watson, first Pro Bowl for Derrick Henry. And here's Deshaun quickly getting to the outside to Keenan Allen, the Chargers star receiver. Ten-point lead for the AFC thanks to the touchdown catch by Andre Roberts, Mark Andrews, the other tight end, Jack Doyle, and then Justin Tucker. What else would he do but cap it with a 50-yarder? It's all Justin Tucker does is hit 50-yarders and be as reliable as ever. The kicker for the Ravens, second down and four. And easily settling in against that zone that time was Jarvis Landry of the Browns for six yards and a first down. You consider Deshaun Watson what he's been able to do one of three quarterbacks with at least 10 wins and 25 touchdown passes in each of the last two seasons. Russell Wilson has been doing that for a long time and then the guy who's going to be playing in Super Bowl 54 Patrick Mahomes last year's NFL MVP. And here is King Henry. Derrick Henry, the Titans running back, goes for five yards. You know, you speak of those young quarterbacks, you know, as we get ready to kind of usher out whenever they decide to go, Brady, Breeze, Rivers, Eli Manning just retired, Hall of Fame career he's had. Now you got the young guys that are coming in now, the guys that are starting to ascend to the forefront. Holmes is already running MVP. Lamar is going to win the MVP this year. Watson will probably win one. I think quarterback is in a very good spot in our league now. Yeah, and that was really a question for a few years because, and we've discussed this before as he checks down over the middle again to Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews now with his ninth catch of the day. That's Pro Bowl. You called that early that Mark Andrews would set the all-time Pro Bowl record. And he's got nine catches for a tight end. But listen, the quarterback in the last quarter of a century has taken over the role of America's leading man. It's not the movie star, it's right. the NFL starting quarterback. And we just had this run, with that guy included, of the generational greats. And you mentioned those guys with Roethlisberger and Breeze and Brady and Phillips Rivers. All these guys you've been seeing in these starring roles. And we just had one retire from the New York Giants this Friday. As Watson goes downfield, incomplete. What a, by the way, what a beautiful reaction by John Mara, the owner of the New York Giants with the retirement of Eli Manning. But there were the questions. Where was that next wave coming from? We qu so quickly got the answer, didn't we? Without a doubt. And, and, and if you follow me for a second here, Ted, the college game can only take what the high school game gives. Right. The NFL game can only take what the college game is giving them. And right now, you're getting a young, dynamic, mm. athletic quarterback who is being allowed to run the football, is, is being allowed to use his legs. You know, no longer are we, are we saying that the quarterback position has to be a guy that has to be a statuesque figure back there. We're looking at guys that can use their legs, can throw the football, can be diverse playmakers like Deshaun Watson. And it's, it's just amazing to see. 25 years ago when I was playing this league, we were talking about where was the next wave, especially the young African-American quarterback. Where was that at? Now you fast forward. Not only do we have African-American quarterbacks that are MVPs, they're coming up, and they are the predominant quarterbacks now using the athletic ability, but also throwing the football like Watson. They're down in fours. It's incomplete. Deshaun Watson with now 71 career passing touchdowns already and 14 career rushing touchdowns, and he just finished his third season. And, and dealing with injuries yes. in that span as well. If there's anything you know about Watson, he's tough. I want to see him with a legitimate, healthy number two all season long with some weapons around him. DeAndre Hopkins, we know what he is, consistent performer, pro bowler. It's going to be the other weapons that are going to be there consistently for Watson because he can do the same things that Mahomes and Jackson are doing. Fourth down and four for Deshaun, and they're going to get it by way of finding Derrick Henry. Now, if Will Fuller is healthy, he yes, stays healthy. He has to stay healthy. Texans yes. offense. Obviously, they have a guy who can stretch the field downfield so this is the fourth down and getting it complete to henry to move the chains and this is the type of game as a defender you like tackling henry because you don't have to bring him to the sure curb. <laughs> yeah pro bowl version of yes, oh, Derek it's henry is much nicer easy to tackle the big guy there's xavier Rhodes from the vikings he was a replacement for richard sherman who of course is a super bowl participant 
here is Henry as he is wrapped up by Grady Jarrett as well as Darius Smith you know hopefully Rhodes can come back I mean, he's been a very good corner in this league for a long time. This was not his best season. I know he's in the Pro Bowl, but this was not his best season. And if the Minnesota Vikings and Mike Zimmer, that defense, which Zimmer loves, are going to continue to be at the forefront in this league, that guy there has to have a bounce-back season next year in 2020. Remember, he was a first-team All-Pro back in 2017, has 10 career interceptions, but only one interception over his last 33 yes. games. That's where you've seen the fall off. Second down and eight. Watson on the slant to the outside receiver, Cortland Sutton. And that'll go for nine yards. Well, they're going to actually mark that down as 12. It's always that vague <laughs> At spotting what point the ball. <laughs> you know, when you're not taking them to the ground full here. <laughs> AFC already with a 10-point lead here as Watson and this group come right down the field. Open the second half, and the ball is out that time as Darius Smith came in and was able to knock it away. And now you see the NFC with a moment of celebration, and I think that is clearly to honor Kobe Bryant. That was vintage Kobe as Darius Smith led the NFC defense into a celebration to take a moment to honor Kobe Bryant. A little jab step in the pull-up. Day where everybody's thoughts, intention, and prayers are with the tragic news that we received earlier today of the helicopter crash in California. We've been sharing with you reaction from the NFL world, and now we hear from Kareem Abdul Jabbar, who says. Most people remember Kobe as the magnificent athlete who inspired a whole generation of basketball players, but I will always remember him as a man who was much more than an athlete. And there is the interception by Harrison Smith, the Vikings' safety, and Smith with a long return. And then he laterals the ball that time to Fletcher Cox. Look at Fletcher Cox stiff-arming Cortland Sutton. The Eagles' big defensive lineman brings it all the way for a touchdown. The 300-pounder taking it off the lateral from Harrison Smith. And I guarantee you the only thing Fletcher Cox is thinking right now is where is the oxygen? <laughs> that is it. So it started with the interception by Harrison Smith. Yeah, watching under, couldn't get a lot on it, Harrison Smith. And then he, he set it up from the get-go, said, hey, somebody get behind me. And I guarantee he was not thinking it was going to be a 300-pound Fletcher Cox. And Cortland Sutton and Nelson, they want no part of the big guy. Look at the stiff arm. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the ultimate characters, too, in the NFL. By the way, he does have two touchdowns in his NFL career they were on fumble returns but now mark it down as a 61 yard interception return and the assist from Harrison Smith <laughs> the big assist from Harrison Smith oh that's I what... can only imagine the conversation he was having with Cortland Sutton as Sutton was attempting to tackle him there as if that was going to happen at any point yeah come on man let me go <laughs> So the AFC looked like they were going to add to their lead. Instead, it's just a three-point margin thanks to the quick thinking of Harrison Smith and the bowling ball run of Fletcher Cox on the return. I'm running it now. Captains today, and you see Bruce Smith and Daryl Green, and each was named to the NFL's 100-year anniversary centennial team. And anytime I see Daryl Green, all I think about is, can he still run 4-2? Just wonder, could he, oh. could he still do it? Having spent time with him this week at the Skills Challenge, trust me, he has the competitive fire to think he could. Lisa? Thank you, Tess. I'm with Lamar Jackson. Lamar, this is your first Pro Bowl. Uh -huh. Tell me, what's been the best part about being down here this week? Uh, I'm closer to home. You know, um, I'm meeting... 
they they kind of knew, but some of them kind of not. You know, but just meeting different personalities, talking to these guys, picking their brains is, is pretty cool. You're the presumptive MVP. What would it mean to you to win it in this just your second season? That would be amazing. You know, I, I never go into a season thinking, you know, if I want to win MVP or stuff like that. You know, I want to win championships. But if it comes out to be a trophy for Baltimore that I didn't plan on getting, but it happened. But, you know, I, I want the uh, Lombardi. That, that's my trophy I want. But if I get it, I'm going to be grateful. Definitely. Well, well, we all in Baltimore, we hope you get it. Yes. But I wanted to ask you about Kobe Bryant. You said you never met him but you felt like he was a part of your family. Right, you know, that's a, that's a legend, man, and he did so much for the game of basketball. A lot of people looked up to Kobe Bryant, you know, um, including myself, you know, um, he, he's a great player, and from what I heard, you know, he was a great person as well, so my heart's in prayers with his family. He said he signed a jersey for you when he you did. got drafted. He did, he did. Yeah. What's that mean to you? I mean, a lot, that's one of the goals. Him, him, MJ, and LeBron, them the top three. You know, I ain't really seen nobody else, man. <laughs> Thank you, Lamar. No problem. Continued Thank success you. to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. And it was Lamar himself who probably signed more jerseys than anybody this week. He was creating a buzz everywhere he went. Third down and eight. Deshaun Watson pointing and directing downfield, but it's incomplete. You know, Lisa mentioned of Lamar. The pending MVP announcement and next Saturday night he's likely going to become the third youngest league MVP in NFL history. Now the tag to that is what I marvel at that Jim Brown first won the MVP at 21 years old. He then won the MVP at 22 years old. <laughs> That's why he's one, of, he's one of the greatest of all time and you know, when, when you talk about in the Hall of Fame that once you get in it's immortality but inside that hall of fame there are different rooms i think he's in a room by himself Tess. deontay harris the rookie return man and brett kern his third straight year is the afc pro bowl punter three-point game here in orlando glad you're with us here as kirk cousins heads out there for the nfc in the 2020 pro bowl 5G experience for America. 5G built right. Hey, this was a thrill today during halftime as we saw the Utah Girls Tackle Football League. They were out there with 22 of their best high school age players. Two teams, 11 on 11 scrimmage. The NFL, of course, supports boys and girls of all abilities and skill levels to play the game. You can visit playfootball.com to learn more. But what was great there seeing the Utah Girls Tackle Football League was the crowd and how much they were paying attention to it and into the action that we were seeing was some good football there at halftime today without a doubt the execution on offense the tackling on defense that was a treat to watch at halftime this guy's been a treat to watch this year kirk cousins for the vikings his second pro bowl is excellent with a deep ball this year eight passing touchdowns and one interception when he went over 20 yards downfield to see 26 touchdowns on the year and then of course the big upset in the postseason against that guy's team right there as he connects with Michael Thomas of the Saints there was so much criticism of Kirk Cousins of can he win the big one the winless on Monday Night Football where's the big win he got the biggest win oh without a doubt and he played fabulous throughout the season now, where's the next step going to be? We talked about Kevin Stefanski, his offensive coordinator, is now the head coach in Cleveland. Gary Kubiak takes over. What's going to be the next step? Because Kirk Cousin does have to play better. He had a good year. Can he have a great, can he be the reason that they ascend and move on through the playoffs? Zeke Elliott in the backfield with him on second and three, and Cousins is going to drift to the outside before throwing it away. Okay, Earl. And being taken down by Earl Thomas the seven-time Pro Bowler now with the Ravens dishing out a little something at the end of that someone tell Earl that we are in the third quarter of the Pro Bowl eh, I'm sure that one will be discussed in the offseason at some point maybe at a fight in Vegas when they see each other Kirk Cousins was literally laughing as he was extending that play but there was a scowl on the face of Earl Thomas Earl Thomas's right. little daughter did a beautiful video hey, report this week. She was acting as a reporter at Pro Bowl practice and was quite talented. Here's third down and three. 50-50 ball goes into the hands of Michael Thomas. Right over Tredavious White. 
the excellent corner from Buffalo. 39-yard hookup between Cousins and Thomas. Someone once told me, when you have a receiver like Michael Thomas, it's not 50-50, it's 80-20 out there when you throw to him. Just look how he goes up in the hand-eye coordination. White is right there, who also had a great year for Buffalo. But it just goes to show you how good Michael Thomas is. The hand-eye coordination, the size hands that he has. He and DeAndre Hopkins have huge hands. Four seasons into the career of Michael Thomas, and he has 470 passes. Easily the most of any player in NFL history in the first four seasons of their career. Cousins to the end zone, and it is Devontae Adams with the touchdown. So divisional rivals connecting to give the NFC the lead. Cousins to Adams. 13-yard touchdown catch for Devontae Adams. Nice accurate throw. Tremaine Evans, the linebacker from Buffalo. He's dropping back in zone coverage. And... I've seen a lot of basketball-themed tributes and celebration today here at the Pro Bowl. As the news started getting around right around kickoff today and we have a blocked extra point and as Tredavious White tried to get after it is that is that allowed in this game that was Josh Allen Jaguars rookie sensation coming straight in John Perry what are they allowed to do in terms of the kicking game <laughs> you know we may go back to that a gap umpire might have a potential leverage coming through the a gap which allows them to block the kick well, we're supposed to have a limited rush on punts and field goals and PATs in this game. There was nothing limited about Josh Allen at 6-5 no coming play. in. As the action was legal, the try is no good. Timeout. Would you term that as limited rush? That's intimidating <laughs> rush, my man. The game changed with the quarterback <laughs> getting hit. The Celtics, that's coming up next on ESPN. Of course, the entire sports world dealing with the news of the horrific helicopter crash that took the life of Kobe Bryant and for others today. Nick Chubb for the AFC, Browns star. Let's check in with Lisa. Tess, I'm with two Nick Packers who had here. two pretty special on the field celebrations first i'm gonna start with Darius smith yes, z ma tell me about your sack celebration uh well it was a contribute to kobe man him and his family uh i think when we first started off in the locker room we was getting crunk we were listening to music and uh we actually yep that's it we actually found out where it happened and you know russell wilson man he called us up man as a team man and we said a prayer for him and his family but uh to do that we came in uh, third third down. We was like, man, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do two, two, two steps, and then we're going to do the fadeaway for him. So for everybody to participate, man, as a team, man, I just hope that, that touched a lot of people in a, in, a, in a special way. Thank you, Z. Devontae, you just scored a touchdown and had your own tribute. Yeah, I mean, I already was going into it. I always been able to, you know, dunk a little bit. I'm a big basketball guy, so Kobe always meant something special to me, being from California especially. So, um, yeah, I just had, had to get my shot off to 2-4 and then go get the 360 on the goalpost for him as well. This is DJ Chark as he flips his way across the goal line with a 60-yard touchdown. So Ryan Tannehill, the Titans quarterback, with a 60-yard touchdown to DJ Sharp, the Jaguars receiver in his first Pro Bowl. Y'all want that content? What get it It's fun. Tannehill, it's a simple little out route there. He's wide open. They play zone coverage, and then you know, kind of Pro Bowl tackling there. I'm not going. I'm not going to say it was a great. It was a missed tackle. I just call it Pro Bowl tackling. And with that, the AFC retakes the lead here in Orlando. Go, 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 go. 
Yeah, that was great to hear Lisa with the guys, with Zadarius Smith and Devontae Adams, and letting everybody know why they did what they did here in the second half and how it came about to pay tribute to Kobe Bryant with their celebrations, both after the sack and after the touchdown. Also interesting to hear how the news went around the locker room. And of course, the news shocking the sports world and the reactions coming in. Shaquille O'Neal simply saying no words to express the pain I'm going through now with this tragic and sad moment. A reminder, we will have continuing coverage and all the reaction on SportsCenter throughout the evening. And if you're watching here on ABC, ABC News following us here, our coverage of the Pro Bowl. Not a surprise to hear Zadarius Smith say it was Russell Wilson in the locker room who gathered everybody to take time as Ezekiel Elliott with the jump pass. And that ball is going to be intercepted that time by Joe Hayden. As the AFC is going to go to their own celebration. They have that video mirror there in the corner of the end zone. I like it. We got props set up now. But I like just, it. Just to wrap up the thought as to what Lisa was talking about with the Packers duo, it was Russell Wilson who gathered everybody and said, guys, let's take the time to pray for Kobe's family. You know, Tess, at a time like this, obviously Russell is... Sportsmanship Award will be announced at NFL Honors. That's February 1st at 8 Eastern on Fox, and they'll receive a $25,000 donation from the NFL Foundation to a charity of their choice. Matthew Slater, the longtime Patriots special teams captain, who has now set the record for most Pro Bowls by a special teamer at eight. And here we have the interception from Smith. He was just with Lisa talking about how to honor Kobe Bryant. And now he comes up with a big moment for the NFC defense. And that is how we will close out the third quarter here. NFC with the interception, trailing the AFC. It's 31-27 from the 2020 Pro Bowl in Orlando. A Sunday matchup with Zion Williamson. Of course, coming off those first two games, as everybody's so excited. Now his Pelican teammates going up against Kemba and the Celtics. Start of the fourth quarter here. 31-27 AFC. Kirk Cousins to Adams again. Vikings and Packers doing well together. Hey, Book, how about this past Wednesday with Zion? His debut against the Spurs. He had 22 points, but it was the fourth quarter. The 17 in the fourth quarter had everybody buzzing. Well, his ability to come in and shoot the three-point, I think, had surprised everyone. And I know everyone is making a big deal about his size and is he too big. I'll say this. I've been living on this earth 42 years. I've never seen a fat basketball player. They run a lot. He's going to be just fine with his weight. Let's relax. Everyone across America who's worried about whether Zion is too big. The guy had knee surgery, couldn't run. He'll be just fine. He's bigger than the defensive lineman who just had a sack right there. That was Josh Allen taking down Kirk Cousins. 17 points came in three minutes. We'll see what he offers up against the Celtics. All right, you want a little tale of the tape with Zion and another New Orleans star? How about the Saints defensive end Cam Jordan, who's playing here in the Pro Bowl? I mean, sidewise similar, but the guy on the left side of your screen has way more explosiveness than the guy on the right side. I will let you have that conversation with Cam Jordan a little later on. Oh, I love you, Cam. Second and 21 after the sack. Cousins hit as he threw it downfield and somehow still got it to Jared Cook. It was Von Miller who was crashing home on Kirk Cousins, and he was able to connect for 30 yards to Jared Cook. You know, when we total up, the total catches and yardage for all the tight ends in this game, it, it's got to be a record total. I mean, when you look at Andrews and now Cook and Doyle, everything that they've been doing. And I know one thing. I know Cook is hoping that Drew Brees comes back to New Orleans because if he does, that chemistry, that duo, along with Thomas and Kamara, 
going to be very formidable next season. Look at this, the all-Vikings backfield with the I formation. And you got Cousins and C.J. Ham, and then the outside pitch here to Dalvin Cook as he's able to go ahead for just over 10 yards. Well, you know, it's interesting you bring up the Saints quarterback situation. we got Breeze here today at 41 years old, and uh -huh. he was the NFC starter. Teddy Bridgewater is an unrestricted free agent. Yeah. Taysom Hill is a restricted free agent. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, I, I think New Orleans first has to start with the first domino. That's Drew Brees. And if Drew Brees does indeed retire, now are you going to have a quarterback competition between T Teddy Bridgewater and Taysom Hill? Or do you decide to kind of go out and look elsewhere? I think it would be a, comp a, a competition between those oh. two. And if you're Teddy Bridgewater, you got to decide. Do you want to be Sean Payton or maybe you want bigger money elsewhere? Cousins throws it away on first and goal. Just over 12 minutes to play here. NFC looking to retake this lead. Because there's a team in Tampa that could be looking for a quarterback. There's a team in New England that could be looking for a quarterback. There's a team in Los Angeles. So I, I, to me, if I'm Teddy Bridgewater right now, I'm in no hurry. I'm sitting back. I'm relaxing. Drew Brees. It's all going to depend on what Brees does, in my opinion. Pending future of Drew Brees. A great visit with Lisa earlier today where he said, you know, basically, hey, I want I want to just gather myself. Yes. I want yes. to talk to my family. I want to let the offseason settle in before I make a decision. Second and goal. Quick out looking for Cook, and it'll be third and goal there. And then you briefly mentioned could be somebody in New England new. <laughs> How much buzz did that create out in Vegas last week when Brady was sitting there and Mark Davis was cage side was, for the are, Conor McGregor fight? I was two seats away from Brady, and as soon as I saw them stand up, I said, oh, boy, here we go. That's going to be a Here's problem. every headline <laughs> happening about five feet to my right. You know, Tom Brady deserves to be able to write his own ending to his career, whether that's in New England or somewhere else. I know Mr. Kraft is, is definitely going to try to get him back there. Third and goal to the end zone and incomplete as Cousins couldn't connect with Kenny Galladay. So it'll be fourth down for Cousins and that NFC offense. NFC with the Seahawks coaching staff. That's Brian Schottenheimer who's been the play caller today. Ready for a jump on the corner. Gone double left minus two gone. All go special. Here is Shotty. Her, her cousin is saying, ready for the jump ball in the corner. Let's see who that target will be. Fourth and goal. NFC looking for the lead here in the fourth quarter. Ball is out as Campbell crashed home, and it's picked up by T.J. Watt. And T.J. Watt striding the other way to return this for a score. And then pointing back at Kirk Cousins as the entire AFC team is joining him in the end zone. Oh, uh, you know, I, I thought they were going to go over to the mirror, the, the, the mirror cam there. And, and, and there they come. <laughs> as the entire AFC roster is now posing in front of the red carpet mirror, celebrating. Calais Campbell forced it out. T.J. Watt scooped it. And there is the strip from Campbell, the Jaguars star, his fourth Pro Bowl. And then T.J. Watt, what an incredible year yes. for T.J. Watt. You know, we mentioned defensive player of the year candidates, and I didn't mention him. His name deserves to be in there, along with Stephon Gilmore and Chandler Jones and Shaq Barrett and Tyron Matthew and all those guys there are vying for that award. That's going to be one of the more coveted awards at NFL Honors next Saturday night. An 82-yard fumble return touchdown for the Steelers Pro Bowler. 14 and a half sacks this year. All the injuries that the Steelers had to deal with. And there was Watt playing at that level. 38-27 here now. Heavenly Father that chose me to do this. I'm very blessed. Congratulations to you, Coach Lang. Thank you very much. Tess, back up to you. Thank you, Lisa, and congratulations to everybody attached to the Dalton Catamounts. There is Matt Lynn. Speaking of coaches, what a great week we've had visiting with John Harbaugh and Pete Carroll. Harbaugh finishing up his 12th season as the coach of the Ravens and Pete Carroll.
Of course, a Super Bowl champion, NFL's oldest head coach at 68 years old and acts like the youngest. Always, I mean, practice this week, it doesn't matter. It's Pro Bowl, it's the Seattle culture. And, you know, we had a great visit with coaches. So I don't want to give the guys a taste of that, the way we go about things. Well, and, and, and pretty much he's done that today and, and throughout the week, just the energy, the environment. And he also told us that, you know, with the with the NFC being down by 11, we may get an opportunity instead of an onside kick to see the fourth and 15. Yeah, the alternate rule, that rule the experimental rule that they're going to experiment with here. And Pete said he'd do it. John Harbaugh said he'd do it. So as the NFC is down here, let's see if we get an opportunity to see that here in the fourth quarter. Trailing by 11. See if they can march down the field, put themselves in position. Zeke Elliott and Kirk Cousins in the backfield. Third down and two. Cousins, shallow cross, and Devontae Adams will move the sticks for the NFC. 13-yard reception there. Well, they were marching in to try to take the lead, and then Calais Campbell disrupted things, and T.J. Watt returned the fumble 82 yards to the score. Yeah, Calais Campbell, man. If you look at him, I mean, he can play in, play tackle. He can play all along the line. You, you just wonder... Are they going to be able to put it all together again in Jacksonville like they did the year they made it to the AFC Championship game? There's Cousins on first down. That was batted away that time by Cam Hayward. Fourth Pro Bowl for the Steelers defensive lineman who's so durable, so reliable each and every year. First team all pro this season. Just has been dominant. Just has been consistent down in and down out year in and year out. Has improved his sack total. Averages six sacks a year for his career. He's on his way to Canton, Ohio, in my opinion. You talk about some of the great Steeler defensive linemen. You just look at the impact that Cam Hayward has had throughout his career. One of the foundational members of what Mike Tomlin and Keith Butler are doing there in Pittsburgh. Second and ten. Quick out, and that's the guy that, you know, you mentioned guys here who will be in Canton, Ohio, and one of them just retired and would have been in this game, of course, and that is Carolina's Luke Keekley. Mm -hmm. So he made the Pro Bowl in each of the last seven seasons, but you're talking about a guy who led the NFL in tackles twice, defensive player of the year, a five-time All-Pro, and he just stepped away from, and one of the real great guys in sports. Uh, so I know it's a short career, but as impactful as any linebacker we've seen in the modern era. Here's Adams again from Cousins. Oh, that's absolutely no question, Ted. Uh, a career that was far too short. Yeah, if you just think about, we always marvel at how quarterbacks run the offense. He ran the defense the same way. He could diagnose, he could hit. And to me, it, it, it's the ultimate decision that he made because he understands his body and whatever the reason that forced him to retire at such an early age I commend him for that because he didn't just make a decision for the right now he made a decision for the rest of his career it's kind of kind of like what we've been talking about with Drew Brees you know Drew Brees could continue playing but does he make a decision for the right now in football or continue going on and thinking about his family as players we have to think about that test because football is so short but you have a, a life expectancy well beyond the game of football. And, and, and it's, for me, it's, it's very satisfying to see players like Breeze contemplating retiring, like Luke Keekley, uh, some of the guys, Patrick Willis, guys that have, have taken upon themselves to value their health and their longevity in life. Inside the 10 here, Kenny Galladay. So coming up on the six-minute mark here in this game, and a 16-yard reception there by Kenny Galladay, 11-point deficit that the NFC is trying to overcome. And keep in mind, we have an experimental rule, and it's the alternative course to the onside kick. You can take a fourth and 15 at your own 25-yard line after scoring to try to keep the ball. To the end zone, and that was beyond Jared Cook there. So it'll be second and goal. You know, as you start winding down, you start to wonder who's going to be the MVP. If the AFC can hold this lead, uh, Lamar Jackson had a really good day. Deshaun Watson had a good day. Any tight end here had a really good day. Mark Andrews, nine <laughs> catches for 73 yards on a touchdown. 
And of course, we have offensive and defensive MVPs at the Pro Bowl. A year ago, the offensive MVP was Patrick Mahomes. Surprise. He's a little busy right now. He yes. arrived in Miami. Offside defense, number 93. Phillips half the distance to the goal. Still second down. You, you know, as we get ready to kind of wrap up this Pro Bowl and everybody's focus in the football world turns to Super Bowl 54. The first thing that comes to mind as you start to overanalyze this game all throughout the week over and over and over, to me it comes down to two simple things. The play calling of Andy Reid. Andy Reid has been known to be a pass happy coach. He's going to have to run the football against this 49ers defensive line. And then, can the 49ers pass rush can they get to Patrick Mahomes with four guys going against the Chiefs five offensive line, but that's two points that have determined Super Bowl 54. Earl Thomas breaking up that second down effort that time, so it'll be third and goal. Completely agree. That front of San Francisco with the four talented guys up front to be able to get home against every quarterback. Mm -hmm. Mahomes has that uncanny ability to float back and yes. send things and still has the arm talent downfield. So we got a third and goal here with the NFC trailing by 11. And remember the experimental rule an alternative to the onside kick could be employed here if they score. Here's Cousins. And Adams will get his way in for the touchdown. So a four-yard touchdown. Cousins to Devontae Adams. They've had a nice connection in this second half, the NFC North rivals. Yeah, let's see if the ball broke the plane. Yes, sir. To the PAT and potentially <laughs> is it, is a it, trial of fourth and 15. I like it. Right now, down five. So the chance for the two pointer here to cut it to a field goal margin for Pete Carroll's team. Seahawks coaching staff heading up the NFC side. 437 left to play. Two point attempt here. Ball's on the ground, and so is Kirk Cousins. So we will see if they go for the new experimental rule of a fourth and 15 at their own 25-yard line when we return to the Pro Bowl. The new experimental rule being used today, the alternative to the onside kick. You can choose to take the ball at your own 25-yard line, but you face a fourth and 15. That is what the NFC is choosing to do. If you convert the fourth and 15, it is your ball. First of all, I think we're doing everything to phase out the kickoff in the game of football, it seems to be. But as, as far as this rule, I like the rule. The only thing I don't like about it it's at the 25. We'd love to see it more toward midfield. All right. So say goodbye onside kick. New experimental rule. Here it is, a fourth and 15. Kirk Cousins to try to keep the ball. He wants more than 15. And it is intercepted. It is Earl Thomas who's now returning the fourth and 15 attempt and laterals the ball to his teammate Marlon Humphrey who <laughs> laterals it again. As now they are blowing it dead. <laughs> as Matthew Judon ended up with it. Oh, come on, guy. I wanted to see a game of pitchy, pitchy, woo, woo, as my guy Scott Van Pelt calls it, baby. I wanted to see it. So let NFL history be recorded. This is what the first time it ever looked like if this thing does stick. Well, and... And again, I understand what they're trying to do. They're slowly trying to phase and make the game safer. I get it. But I think if, if, if this rule is ever to make its way into the game, because what happens is if you don't get it there, are you going to put the football back at the 25 and you're giving them basically a 42-yard field goal? Exactly right. Now, listen, the last couple of years, the rules changed for an onside kick. And with it, we haven't seen success with onside kicks. There's no more of the run-up. So onside kick attempts were down to just over 10%. Prior to that, with the old rules, they were nearly 20%. A fourth and 15 has been converted in the last 18 years at over 23%. That's a little more in line with what the onside kick percentage used to be. Let's check in with Lisa. Thanks, Des. I'm with Deshaun Watson. Deshaun, we were just talking about the new rule. That was our first look at it. You said you like it. How come? I do. I mean, it gives an opportunity to 
I mean, keep the ball, especially on the offensive side, and, and try to put up more points. And, and of course, for safety, you don't want to get guys out there going in, you know, try to go hard on offside kick and, you know, you know, run into each other. So it's a good, good uh, change up for the fans, too. For you, this is your second Pro Bowl, your third season in the league. We were joking that you're quickly becoming an old veteran. But what did you learn from this season? Uh, for this season, I mean, just opportunity to just go out there, you know, with my teammates and be able to, you know, take the game to another level, try to, you know, take the organization to where we want to go to. Um, and then also just, you know, being here at the Pro Bowl, just having another opportunity for my family and meet other families and other friends. So it was awesome. Tell me your thoughts on the tragic passing of, of Kobe Bryant. I mean, it's... it's, it's I don't even really have words for it. I mean, it was heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. And, and for us to, you know, find out in the locker room before we came out, a lot of guys were just very emotional. Um, and just to uh, be able to, you know, get to know, know Kobe a couple months ago. He came down to Houston. And, and now with his loss and his family, I'm prayers all out to his family and friends. And uh, I mean, it's just it's terrible news. Condolences to you for your loss, too. Right. Back to you, Tess. Now, Deshaun Watson's uh, well publicized that he is a very spiritual person as he has made some spiritual treats in the offseason. You can see how emotional he was in dealing with the news of the passing of Kobe Bryant today. A reminder, we will have continuing coverage and all the latest on the horrific tragedy that we've all been absorbing that took place in California earlier today on ABC with our news team there as well as our NBA team and Sports Center team on ESPN the Pelicans and the Celtics are coming up on ESPN but Sports Center will have continuing coverage all night long and invite you to go to ESPN.com as well for that Sean Watson finished up his day with 148 yards and a touchdown we have now heard from NBA Commissioner Adam Silver who issued the statement of saying the NBA family is devastated by the tragic passing of Kobe and his daughter. Called Kobe a remarkable talent blending with absolute devotion to winning. And the NBA Commissioner Silver send their heartfelt condolences to Vanessa, Kobe's wife, and their family. And shock waves through the sports world. Earlier today, just after we kicked off here at the Pro Bowl, we had things confirmed that the news was true. And you can see the players reacting, the fans reacting here today as the NFL acted quickly in honoring Kobe Bryant with a moment of silence. And here is Mark Ingram. As that'll bring us to the two-minute warning. The AFC with T.J. Watt's fumble return touchdown pacing the way for the lead. Now, timeout is used. I want to get back to what we saw with the experimental rule, and I want to bring in our Super Bowl referee, John Perry. Boog says, I like the idea of a fourth and 15 to keep possession, but doesn't like it at the 25-yard line. What's your read, John? You know, we changed the free kick rules in 2018. Five guys each side. No one can move prior to the ball being kicked. Got to have two, two, and one. Got to separate. All that reduced concussions by 35% on, on kickoffs. So I'm all for that. But I like the kicking game. I like the special teams having a big impact on the game of football. So I'd like to keep it. I'd like to do a matchup. If we got five to one side, you can go max to five on the receiving team and then use that kicker to do what they're so good at doing. Yeah, creating that chaos of the second bounce. That would be interesting if you had five on the receiving team so that you get the one-on-one -on -one of the five now that by rule you have to have on the kicking team. But for today, it was a fourth and 15 at the 25-yard line that was then intercepted. And now two minutes away from an AFC victory here in the Pro Bowl. Apple 5G experience in America. Today, Verizon gave viewers at Super Bowl Live in Miami a new way to view the Pro Bowl. Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband enabled delivery of multiple live camera angles to create an immersive 8K experience. Amazing to think 
where the game is going, the technology, as you see the game there with the 360 camera up on a dome, an immersive 8K experience is how folks were watching this Pro Bowl at Super Bowl Live in Miami. And there is a live shot of that unique camera. Thanks to our friends at Verizon. See if I can get one of those in my living room to kind of watch over everything as we're gone. You'll still be watching replays of LSU winning the national title. <laughs> Absolutely. I can imagine on that. You know, I, I know we mentioned the fourth and 15 yes. in, in, in the rule. You know, as they worked through that proposal, it was brought to my attention that it was designed or it's going to be designed if it's ever brought up. Only be done, only can be done once a game. Okay. And it's for a team that's down by two scores to try to keep the game more interesting and, and for a team that's down two scores so that way they can come back. John Perry, your gut, do you think it sticks? Will we see that in the NFL down the road of fourth and 15 in the game to keep possession of the ball after you score? Well, you take a look at the free kick, what we did in 2018, we created a new rule that had one year. And if it worked, we continue. If it didn't, then we get rid of it. So it may have legs. So we're counting down here towards an AFC win. We've been told the MVPs will be Lamar Jackson on offense. Lamar had 185 yards and two touchdown passes. And defensively, Calais Campbell, as he made an impact as well. It was the T.J. Watt fumble return after he was able to get in there for the score for the AFC. It made it 38-27. Coverage of the 2020 Pro Bowl continues on ESPN, but right now, for our viewers on ABC, we break away from our broadcasts to send it to Tom Yamas in New York and an ABC News special report. So you're telling me that Lamar Jackson gets MVP on Sunday, and then in six days he's going to get another one on Saturday night in Miami. <laughs> exactly. Hugs all around. Great week. Camaraderie. Good for the fans. Awesome weather here in Orlando with the best versus the best. That'll go down. As it stands, as an AFC 38 to 33 score. Some interesting plays down the stretch of this game. The Watt fumble return, obviously, was the key moment as the NFC was marching in, and all of a sudden they're going the other way. And then the NFC closed it to five. They had the failed two point conversion. They went for the new experimental role, hoping to keep the ball, hoping to keep possession, make something happen. And instead, that Kirk Cousins throw downfield was intercepted. <laughs> But this event is about fun, and that's what it was about. The fans get a chance to interact with the best of the best in the NFL. The players get to bring their families down here. Winning team gets a little bit more than the losing team here, so we'll see how that goes. But overall, a great event, and now the football world will focus on Miami. Of course, we will have coverage all week long. NFL Live right through countdown to Super Bowl Sunday. Lamar Jackson, your offensive MVP. An AFC win here in Orlando in the 2020 Pro Bowl. As we will send it to Sports Center with Zubin Mahenti and Michael Eves with continuing coverage of Kobe Bryant. So long from Orlando.